Warning, the following video contains gunsmithing. Do not gunsmith unless you are in fact a gunsmith. Wear eye protection when gunsmithing. When gunsmithing, don't eat, drink, or smoke. Do not set yourself on fire. In case of emergency, run like hell. Rugs are frequently pulled out. Cows may fall on you. Do not touch the edges of the sign, they're sharp. Caution, do not smell water fountain. And remember, this machine has no brain. You must use your own. I'm going to show how to replace the firing pin, return spring, and firing spring on a Marlin Model 60 22. This is a, a tube magazine fed 22 rifle. They were super popular. They just sold like crazy. And a lot of people have a bunch of old worn out ones that are just frustrating. They're not fun to shoot anymore because the firing pin's worn down, the springs are weak, and it's just frustrating. So. This is for entertainment purposes only. You should have a qualified gunsmith service your weapons because it's a gun. Bad things can happen. So for entertainment purposes only, I'm going to show you how it's done just so you get an idea of what is involved. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get some tools together. This is what I like to use for this job. Um, I've got a socket, I've got a punch, a screwdriver, and a couple pairs of pliers. Locking vice grips, needle nose and a pair of needle nose pliers. I've got real fine ones. The first thing you want to do with a firearm when you pick it up, whether it's the Model 60 or anything else, is keep your stinking finger out of the trigger. You're not going to shoot something right out the gate. So keep it out of there. Uh, the next thing I would do is make sure that it's unloaded if it's about to be serviced. So remove the magazine. It's a little bit different in this one than a lot of them. Um, just slide the tube magazine out. Look at that. I actually staged it for the video. But get rid of all the rounds that are in the magazine, the tube magazine, and then pull this back and get make sure that the chamber's empty. And then visually inspect and look down in there. If you have a flashlight, use it. That <laughs> there's nothing in there. It's totally empty. It's totally unloaded. Now we can begin. And then there's two screws to pull. There's a flathead screw at the base of the trigger guard. So we'll pull that one out. Put that in the magnet dish. And then there's the one that holds the stock. This one holds it to the rest of the carrier. And then this one just holds the stock to the front of the carrier. So this is in the open position. You want to actuate it to be in the closed position when you're taking it apart. So put this down against the table and then pull up on the stock and it'll come right off. There's a pin in the back side that needs to come out. So the same side that your charging handle is on, you want to push uh, the opposite direction. And then if you need to, you can use a screwdriver and pull it out a little bit. Before it comes out all the way, you push down here. Or I push down, you don't, because you're just watching this for entertainment purposes. Don't forget that. So you pull that out, set it down, and now you can pull the trigger assembly and everything up and out of here. So here's one of the springs. This is kind of the tricky hard one to do. Well, springs are generally hard, but here's how you do this one. This is in the cocked position. This is the part that goes and smacks the back side of the firing pin forward. So we need to put it in the uncocked position. So where the trigger actuates is here, so just take your screwdriver and uh, hold it on the back side so nothing can whack you or whatever, but this is basically going to pop up in three, two, one. So now you're in the up position. You see that the spring's more stretched out now and it's not as big a threat to you as it was before. Uh, the next thing you want to do is pull the spring back far enough with a screwdriver or whatever you have and then you've got to get your vice grips on or just turn this. Basically you pull the spring back, you turn that and you're in. So here we go. Moment of truth. If you have something like a bench vice or something to pull against or some kind of something to resist you this way that really helps. I don't have anything where my tripod is so anyway uh, get your eye protection on Pull, uh, hold this with some pliers. Just basically all you got to do is pull the spring back and then rotate this 
and then it lets the spring go. It lets it out basically. So then you want to pull this back like it's in the cocked position again and that gives you more rod to work with. It sticks up so that you can hold on to it better. Put it on here. You'll notice that there's a little gap right there. That gap that you see right there has to be in the down position. That's a cutout for the trigger mechanism. So what we're going to do is we're going to face it this way. We're going to pull it down and clamp it. Apparently my vice grips need to be just a little tighter. Get my hat on backwards and we'll show you how to get this thing back together here. Okay, so you hold this so that there's a little gap for the bar. Go down just a little ways, clamp on, and now that you're secured, you just rotate it like this and line it up and then hold that in place with one pair of pliers and then clear your vice grips. They'll pop out of the way. And what happens is if you just let go of the vice grips, if the spring hits it unevenly or something, then this gate is going to open again and your spring's going to go flying. The spring, when it pushes against it evenly and squarely, holds it from coming undone. So we'll pop this open slowly, pull it out, and you can see the spring's been replaced. This is the easy way to do it. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. This is the easy way to do it. You're welcome. Entertaining, isn't it? Not that you're ever going to do this. Don't run with scissors. Don't gunsmith your own guns. Don't step on Superman's cape. Don't piss into the wind. And certainly don't mess with Jim. So this part's done. Uh, the other two parts that you want to service are here and there's the spring and then there's the firing pin so you're gonna have to pull this out by uh, you pull back lift up a little bit and then I just clear the charging handle set it to the side wherever and so we're gonna pull back and then lift up and then we're just gonna angle the whole thing and just smoothly go forward what we want to do with the return spring is we want to keep it nice and straight. We don't want to kink it and bend it. So there's a little retainer on the back side of that pin. And there's a pointy end, like a stylus. Styluses weren't even really invented back then, I don't think. At least not for electronic devices. But that's how that goes. So you're going to get rid of the old spring. Have your new spring ready. Get your pin ready. And here comes the socket and punch part. So here's the firing pin. Looks like this one does have an updated one in it. The old firing pins used to look like this. This is an old worn out one. But now they're closed. It goes all the way around. It's not open like that anymore. So set that aside. What we have is we got a little barrel on this side. See where it's curved here? That one does not get the barrel. The square one gets the barrel. So that's one way to remember it. And the pin goes in and out through uh, the part that has the slope or the slant on it. So the socket is to catch the pin in the barrel. And then you need a punch or, you know, like a, a framing, not framing, a finishing nail or something hard. This is a treated punch. And so we need to have it go out that way. I had it staged drawn. Good thing I caught it in time, huh? You can also see that there's some little lines that are cast in it there that help to hold it in place. So those lines need to go in last and come out first. So this is one of those things where you can hit it 20 times, oh well, you need a hammer too. You can hit it 20 times really soft and it won't budge or won't move or go slow or you can just hit it once really good and it just gets right on through. Hit it one time good and everything comes out. Your little roller barrel is still in there. So you just, uh, you can leave it in or roll it out. I roll it out just so it doesn't fall out at some other time. So this is the firing pin. A worn out old firing pin like this one will be open on one side. You can see that this one's closed. And if you put them together, you'll find an old worn out firing pin will be short and fat. 
the newer updated ones are more pointed. They hit a smaller thing, make it more of a ding in it, and they stick out slightly further. And that's just where you don't want to dry fire one of these because if you do dry fire it, what's happening is the firing pin, you see that's where the, the round would be. The firing pin will just hit into the end of this and it'll kind of make a hollow spot, but it'll also wear this down. So that's why you don't dry fire a rim fire. So this is a 22 caliber round and that's the rim. So basically this little pin hits on the edge of that and by hitting on the edge of it, you have to hit it really hard and just right or it will misfire, it won't go off. But you just do a real sharp, smart bang on it, it'll fire it. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this one and put in the new one. So we're going to do it with the, the hill or the wave up. We're going to put our barrel in. When you go to put the barrel in, you're not going to be able to see it because I have to turn uh, I have to turn it this way, but I'm basically going to just set it on a shelf like that. And then gravity will hold it in place until I get the pin ready. So you look at the one side is tapered and the other side is very square. The taper side goes in first from the curved side. So we're going to take firing pin and advance that. We're going to tap that down furling or furled or whatever I think is what you call that. So you tap it, it'll kind of find its way in. So we're going to go back this way, get our barrel in place. Screwdriver works better for this next part. Let me see if I can get one of those. I think my tool list was pretty incomplete. What do you think? Okay, so we're in place, and so I'm going to drive this down until it's flush. It's trying to be real gentle. And then I'm going to take the pin. It's not going to go all the way to the work surface. I'm just going to lightly tap it until I'm just a little past flush. Perfect. Nice and flush both sides. My roller rolls, my pin slides. See what happens is that piece that I showed you earlier, that striker, I'll cock it here so it's in the cock position. You can see that there's a bunch of wear on that as well. So the new pin's going to help because there was shortness here and then there was shortness on the pin so it wasn't going all the way. It wasn't hitting it good and hard. So anyway, here comes the next hard part. We need to take the new spring. It's been folded in half in a bag, so you got a little kink in it. We're going to take the, the new spring, put it on a pin, and then we're going to slide it up in here. And this is the way I do it, and it seems like there's probably a much better way to do it than what I'm doing. Um, I basically just take it with the pliers on the back side here, guide it in. You just got to be really careful not to kink it, is all. If I just take it like this, load it in there, and then load the pin, just push it down. Probably an easier way to do it. This is just how I do it. There we go. Then we need to take this and just put it... Uh, like that, saddle style. Pull back, just get it in front of everything first, and then just let it forward a little bit, and then go like that. So that's ready to go. Get our old parts out of the way. Back down to just a screwdriver now. It's getting exciting, we're almost done. So you're gonna take uh, your trigger assembly and everything. We're gonna hook it underneath. Turn it sideways so you can see. So there's a little pin. You got to put it under the pin on each side and then push it down. If you cock it, it'll go in a lot better for you. Did you see how I cocked it there? So let's uncock it by hitting the trigger there. So to cock it, you just take that uh, hammer and you just lay it back until it catches. 
Then you take this, uh, put it up underneath the pins. And now this is spring loaded here. What's happening is this part here is, you know, it pushes the round up. It's pushing on that, so you have to push it down. So you push down, take your uh, little barrel, put it in through there. And now this is all ready to go. This is the gun right here. So now we're down to just two screws to put the uh, stock back on. If you're going to put on a new stock, I really like the ATI stocks with the pistol grip. This is a great time to do it. And if that's all you're doing, it's just those two screws right there and there. It's really easy. First, I'm going to have everything right side up. And I'm going to aim this back part right here into here so I don't scratch anything. I'm going to keep this nice and pretty. It looks beautiful. It looks almost like a squirrel hide or something. Just really nice green. So we're going to keep it that way. So take your large screw and put that in first. If you put it down solid, then you're going to be more stable. I like to guide with my thumb and that way you don't scratch anything. It's just two screws to get the stock on and off so that it's real easy to get in and uh, lubricate anything you got to lubricate and service anything you got to service. Or your gunsmith can do it. Remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Alright. So, there we are. We're all set. That return spring's pretty sharp. It's doing great. So there you go, the Model 60 Marlin tube-fed magazine. Speaking of which, we need to get that put back in. When I was younger, I think, I don't remember how old I was. I think I was 11 or 12. I was up hiking and shooting. Hiking and shooting, and my magazine slipped out. The spring on it had gone bad or something, so it didn't hold, it didn't catch. I lost it, and I had to go back, and it was in a bunch of really tall, straight, yellow grass. So, uh, I found it. it. Took me a couple days, a couple three days, but I found it. So there you go. So here's uh, here's what we did. We did a new return spring, a new hammer spring or firing spring, and a new firing pin. This thing's going to work awesome. Instead of being an exercise in frustration and futility, this is going to be you know good times. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click thumbs up, subscribe if you like this video. We'll have some more like it. Um, if you subscribe because of this video, tell me in the comments so that I know I'll do more stuff like this if you like it. Cheers.